Minister of the RWS Science Secretariat. The world that I want is one where everyone enjoys secure water and sanitation services. And this week, I ask you to reflect on how to make this happen. I believe that it boils down to people, power and politics. Since 1990, over 2 billion more people have drinking water. But there's still a long way to go. In fact, almost 800 million people lack water services. And the figure is even higher for sanitation. Now, people differ. Time needs to be invested to develop a real understanding of what people want, need and can afford so that solutions for water and sanitation can work in the long term, both for the rich, for the poor and for the wide spectrum from urban to, to rural dwellers. What do you think? Power is uneven. Those in positions of power and authority make decisions for others even for water. Inefficiencies and corruption can result. Meanwhile, those without access, they also don't have power, they don't have voice. How can we balance this? Well, politics matters. One needs to address competing interests, from those who destroy and pollute the environment, to those who need safe drinking water. There's need for better governance at all levels, transparency, accountability and capacity. And as global citizens, we need to put pressure on local and national leaders, as well as global leaders, regarding drinking water and sanitation services. Governments need to really prioritise and drive water supply and sanitation so that everyone has access forever. It would also be great to see more of civil society really grasping and sharing the latest stories, successes and statistics. Engaging social and mass media so that more people really understand the issues, they're aware of the solutions, they appreciate the risks and they get much more involved. Now over to you. What do you think the main constraints are? for a world in which everyone has access to a safe and sustainable drinking water and sanitation service. And what do you think that you and others need to do to change the situation, policies, ways of working, decision making? And finally, what message would you like to bring to those that are now formulating the world's new global development agenda? Thank you very much.